Imagine being reborn as pure, unfiltered evil. The type of evil that kills and hurts, not because of a reason, not because of vengeance, but simply because when asked, why did you force me to kill my own mother that I miss so much, she will respond probably saying, lol, I thought it was fun. And seriously, I can't begin to express how thankful I am that for the first time with anime, that these Otome game series that are always talking about how evil the character that they are born into, that by the end of the game or by the end of every row, this character always ends up dead, I'm worried about dying. You know, it's always the same thing where it's like, okay, their actions weren't actually evil, they were kind of a bitch, but at the end of the day, like, you're clearly not a bad person and therefore everyone loves you around you, so you're gonna be fine. But a show like this, they go a very interesting direction of almost bringing up the question of like, just imagine, imagine being reborn as someone like Jeffrey Dahmer. Even if it's before he did everything he did, how would you feel being reborn as that monster knowing what can happen and then a mixture of this very well still can happen? If you're already being reborn into an Atoma game, whatever force caused you to do that, what if that's not all there is? What if no matter how hard you try, you still end up becoming that monster because of things out of your control? There's a lot of uncertainty, and for the first time in a Tome game anime, now I'm not saying there aren't light novels that have done this before, but if we're looking strictly at the Atome game anime that have come out, this really does feel like the first time we're asking the real questions and looking at her objectively saying, this is some Dio level evil. This, like, she would get along with Dio, no wonder she's freaking out. In this episode, it really does paint a picture. This is just scratching the surface of what this character will do in the future, and I am terrified but excited to see the type of chaos that we're going to learn about her, because everything I've heard about her is agreeing that she is pure evil, and this is clearly just the start. This is her before she probably completely goes off the rails. And honestly, I'm here for this one. Full live reaction episode 2 is available on my Patreon if you would like to see my full and cut thoughts as I watch today's Last Boss Queen episode. Very much enjoying this one. It is definitely already my personal favorite Atome game anime that I've seen. And while I'm not a connoisseur, I haven't seen as many Atome game series as I have just generic Isekai. At the end of the day, I do feel like this one's special. And I think the first thing we need to talk about is Gilbert. So, last week he did give me a vibe that maybe we shouldn't trust him, but they quickly, like, averted away from him, so I didn't really think much of it. In this episode, we see that he's spreading some uh, false, false information. He's pretty much saying how evil Pride is, how he's, she's treating stale like garbage, and we know that is the farthest thing from the truth. Now, initially my feelings for him was this rat bastard, this snake, but I do feel like there's going to be more than meets the eye. Now, I see one of two things happening. Either A, Pride up until our girl took over her body has potentially already did some shady things to him, or... What I think is the more likely outcome is that he looks at her because everyone, like the mother, the father, people are saying it's almost like she changed overnight. Look at the servants in episode one. They're all basically chalking it up to, well, she just had her powers awakened, so therefore her personality must have changed. It's like a blessing of the god. Very intelligent way to explain a sudden personality shift from spoiled brat girl to seemingly loving daughter and sister. I have a feeling he's looking at her as how she was, and he probably worried about, this girl should never be queen. Look at her sister, bundle of pride and joy. Why should someone who seems like a spoiled brat who cares about no one but herself be the ruler of this kingdom. I feel like that's probably why Gilbert's like spreading a bunch of smack talk. Of course, for us, it sucks because we're like, look at this girl, she's just trying to be okay. I feel like that's the route they're going, but could they just go with Gilbert's a scumbag? Sure. But I'm, I'm trying to look at things of how it could be a lot more complex than what we're first seeing, and I am excited to see what they do, because this episode was all about stale, like he was in the driver's seat this week. And honestly, another thing that helps set a show like this apart from a, a similar group of shows, I mean, hell, half these Atoma game anime look the same. Every time I see a poster for a new Atoma game anime, it looks like the same main character. It's like... Literally the generic isekai problem of they share a similar character design. But what I love about this show is how it branches off rather than just introducing here's the eight love interests that are all going to be targeting our girl. It's all about stale right now. It really is. We have this like forced brother dynamic that now feels quite genuine. And he is doing everything in his power to help her because what started off as 
I'll use my influence, I'll rise up here, I'll change the rules so I can see my mom, turned into why is this girl who's so nice to me scared about becoming evil in the future? And then after seeing the lengths that this family has gone to, of course, I think he deserves more than just a, a letter a month or being able to send a letter once a year. But in the grand picture of the BS of royalty shenanigans, he did get a pretty good deal, all things considered. And the mom definitely is being hooked up rather well. I like the fact that he looks at current day actions and goes from a scared boy forced away from his home to saying, damn it, I will do whatever I can to make sure that someone as nice as this, who had no reason to be this nice, gets to be on that throne and no one will stand in her way. And I love how rather than going from, oh, he's just going to attack Gilbert or talk smack, like my assumption was jump out of those bushes and correct him, right? But no. He did things intelligently. He uh, he got an education. He got like proper etiquette of how to eat at a dinner table. He's knowing that he has to fit the new role that he's a part of. And as we can see with how he just Gilbert's what, six foot tall? This little short boy was almost, even though he had to look up at him, it was almost as if they were standing at eye level. And literally, as we see with Pride and her sister, they were like, oh man, what did he become like Gilbert? I'm, I'm excited, right? Because this show rather than going the route we always see of, oh, they're evil, but really it's like, yeah, they, they just kind of seemed like a biatch. Like, that's kind of like what it is. And if they were actually like foreshadowing evil moments, you look at the current character and you're like, man, she just feels like she's a ditz or like, oh, she's acting like, oh, it's the scariest thing, but she's always happy. This girl is legit terrified because they're treating it as, imagine being reborn in a serial killer monster's body. That's what we're dealing with here. This future very well still can happen. And when you ask the questions, which this is the first time I've seen an Atoma game anime do this, what would happen if you get reborn into such a horrible situation? You then have to start asking, is there an external force that we don't comprehend? Is this just entertainment for someone watching on their TV? I don't know. She doesn't know. But it terrifies her to not know why she was put in this situation and the fact that she very well knows all of this still can happen. Even though she's a good person, you don't know what will happen when you're now put into a new body that you know what it's capable of. And honestly, I can't believe how good this one turned out. I heard good things walking in, which is why I watched episode one last week. But I hear that about every Atoma game anime. And some are funny, some are fine. But this, to me, already looks like it could be a masterpiece of the kind of isekai otome game genre, and I am here for more. Now, of course, these are just my feelings. People may feel differently. People may say, you know what, I don't really find it that great. If that's how you feel, that's fine. Everyone has their feelings. But I really think we're watching something amazing here. It's different. It's unique. And they're finally going the route where I feel like I'm seeing more and more people say, I'm just happy to see an actually evil character you're born into because now it understandably is like why you're fearful of what you can become. So let me know what you thought of episode two. You're going to keep on watching this one because I definitely am. Let me know down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more videos to the channel. And like I mentioned, we do have that full live reaction to today's wonderful episode available on my Patreon. And hey, while you're there, you can also get a video shout out. So today we have all Ann, Fuzzy, Gomison and Harry Truscott. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.